All right, everyone, we should be live uh, roughly at the top of the half hour. So uh, thank goodness uh, I was able to make it in time. We'll make sure we're actually live on Rumble, although I see uh, chat is actually working. So that's usually a good sign. Lots and lots of updates, lots and lots of news. And uh, I've decided to not have the tabs open because I've got the notes in a notepad file off to the side. I'm going to read from that mainly and just cover things with my thoughts because I, I can memorize the articles. I'll refer to those links if needed. I have a feeling that's why I'm having cutting out occasionally uh, on these live streams. I'm overloading the browser. So we're going to test that and see if my uh, theory is true. By the way, link in the description uh, on both platforms, as well as pinned at the top of chat if you're on YouTube. Uh, we are still griefing the uh, Turks on Pixel Planet, sinking their nation slowly into the Mediterranean. We've taken an absolutely gigantic chunk out of their country. To the side there, by the way, you'll see the Greeks have begun to fight. Uh, they have begun restoring their country. Now, their flag is still um, uh, probably about one third completed there. You can help them out if you want. They use the medium blue. Uh, don't sink their country into the ocean. Same with those islands that you see in the Aegean. If you don't know much about geography, just you'll want to brush up if you're doing anything on Pixel Planet. Uh, we're just going to color them all in with the Greek blue over time. But our main goal right now is to sink Turkey into the ocean so that it no longer exists. They're trying to do some basic repairs, but it's uh, it's not going over well. They also tried to grief Clankton down on the uh, west coast of Africa. Now, that didn't work out too well either. Now, they can't. They don't have the numbers necessary because they don't have a streamer backing them at this point. Hilarious. And I'll be pixeling things in sporadically as well. Ha 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 ha. You can't stop me. I lead by example, as you can tell. Anyway, the first news story, of course, we're going to give hurricane updates. Uh, Southern Florida has been battered by Hurricane Ian. It almost got to Cat 5, so it is in the top five as far as hurricane strength that's hit uh, Florida, uh, hit landfall there uh, throughout history. Uh, there's been uh, significant damage, although I don't know that it's been significant enough that they'll start bitching about DeSantis. Like, they expect him to go, I guess, personally with a broom and a shovel and a mop and everything else and clean up every single home in Florida. Otherwise, I mean, he can do no right. I don't know that there was enough damage for them to be able to bitch about it uh, long term, though. They will attempt to make it a midterm issue, though, for his campaign. Of course, we're, uh, what now, uh, 40 or so days out from the uh, midterm election itself. You can expect them to try to uh, throw that into his face. Prediction, they will do that. By the way, uh, based on the storm's tracking that they're now favoring in the spaghetti models, we could be seeing another Hurricane Irene situation, especially for people in the mid-Atlantic in that area. If this storm has any strength to it at all, and it goes over a mountainous area, uh, if you are near a creek, if you are near a river, etc., over the next 24 hours, you probably want to do some storm preparedness just to be sure. Um, Irene showed that a tropical depression, or I think it was still a storm at the time, can even uh, end up in New England and cause catastrophic damage. If you are in New England, uh, there is at least a, a vague possibility it could show up there and, and go Irene mode. And if you live in Brandon, Vermont, <laughs> you would definitely remember that because it washed away about half of the city's center. Um, the problem is that, of course, if you get a bunch of rain in a flat area like Florida, uh, minus the storm surge, of course, that's kept more catastrophic. Okay, the water sits there and it slowly recedes. Everything's flat. That doesn't happen if you have hills and mountains. All of that water gets funneled into areas that will accept it. Of course, it follows the law of gravity and overwhelms streams and rivers. So be very careful if you're anywhere near the possible path of this storm uh, as it moves up the uh, Atlantic region. Um, it's favored to stay over land uh, and hit even parts of Kentucky, for example. That could be a big problem, so uh, uh, prepare accordingly. Uh, another update, over 2 million people in Florida currently without power. As it moves through northern Florida, that could be more. Um, so there has been a significant amount of damage. I haven't gotten an update on the number of lives lost. Hopefully it's zero. Uh, that would be uh, great. Um, I have a feeling, though, they'll, they'll find some person who was elderly and cantankerous who got killed by storm surge at some point, unfortunately. Music and fiction, Nord Stream Theory, Ukraine sub-drones and UK and US training. Possible. Not a banned account. Will NATO counterattack Russia for the Nord Stream sabotage? 
If they can lay out uh, absolute positive proof that Russia did it, I'm very skeptical that that would happen. I don't think that Russia did it. Desert Hamster, will you paint your cats a different color? No. Uh, Jason Winnie, you once explained how government causes and supports monopolies. Can you please explain again? Yes, through grants and through non-competitive practices, uh, propping up, you know, look at what happened with the bailouts, for instance, back during the Occupy days. Uh, certain banks and auto manufacturers were given huge amounts of taxpayer money to keep them afloat. If you were a small car dealership, you didn't get any money. Um, if, if you were an upstart, like a firm, if you were like Tesla at the time or something, you didn't get any money. If you were um, in, in banking, but it was like a, a smaller bank, you didn't get any money. Uh, and so the government causes these monopolies. It does the same with big tech. Uh, all of the major political figures, taxpayer funded services, NOAA, et cetera. You can get NOAA alerts, taxpayer funded on Twitter. You can't get them on Gab. Um, this creates monopolistic situations. I'm not your buddy, guy. Dems claim if you vote for them, they can stop hurricanes. So based on that logic, they can control hurricanes and right now are killing off the competition. Yeah, exactly. They've got uh, the House, they've narrowly got the Senate, and they've got the White House. Well, why is Hurricane Ian a thing? Ozzy's Robots, Morning Sticks, I'm right on the ocean in Florida. Posted a half dozen videos. The ocean is brutal right now. About 30 feet of dune is separating me from floating up to Vermont to say hello in person. I'm not your buddy, guy, but in all seriousness, I'm curious how far we've come since cloud seeding tech. Uh, I don't think that the kind of technology for true weather control still exists, although there are plenty of conspiracy theories about it. Not a banned account. If humanity dies by nukes, will demons live on? Ghouls will live on. Yeah, there'll be some glowing ones out there. Not all of them will even be feds anymore. Scarfy the Strange. Funny how Nord Stream sabotage happened just at the right time for people to be distracted by a hurricane. Yeah, indubitably. Very interesting indeed. Anyway, let me get my uh, tabs here. <clears throat> oh, yeah, we've got a couple of uh, Biden sundowner moments. We'll talk about this first. Links in the description, by the way. You can follow along with the news as I go through it. A lot of them are archived. These ones aren't uh, the, the first two because they're video links. Uh, Biden had a couple of oopsie moments. Firstly, forgetting the name of the person he was supposed to be at a brief remembrance for. Um, I can't remember the exact name of the individual. I should probably open, uh, I guess this tab deserves to be opened because of that. Don't want to misspeak. Otherwise, uh, people will dogpile me. Jackie, where's Jackie? Joe Biden says about Representative Jackie Walorski, who died in a car accident a few months ago. Yes, indeed. Uh, he issued a statement when this happened. All of a sudden, he thinks that she is still alive. By the way, the New York Times itself actually produced a story on this. This is so far beyond the pale that even the New York Times, that keep in mind is part of the legacy media that partners directly with the White House to spin economic propaganda, even they decided to make a story on it, which means that it's significant. They're starting to question his mental health. They ought to have done that a couple of years ago, like most sane people did, but they, you know, orange man bad, so they were willing to overlook it. I dare say more and more people are not overlooking it now. And there's a second link too, a second sundowner moment. And uh, this one um, I, I think is personally worse uh, than forgetting about the dead woman that was just literally mentioned five minutes prior to you taking the stage. And the second one has to do with uh, Biden not knowing where he is. This is becoming more and more common. And Jill Biden, who's still apparently, you know, mentally with it, more or less, she's younger than he is. You know, she babysat for him, so she should be, uh, has to direct him about where he's supposed to go when he's done delivering a speech. This is the fifth or sixth time this has happened. And I pointed out something interesting. When the asterisk stewardship began, you could reliably expect one of these moments a month or thereabouts, and it started getting more frequent from there. It was sporadic, like every other month when he was in the primaries, and maybe, you know, a couple times a year before that, from VP hood to not being a candidate for anything, he would still make gaps. As he appeared more in public, you could see it was like every month or, or nearly so for a while. Since this year began, and now we're marching on towards the end of the year, midterms loom up, and that's in you know November, uh, now it's basically a weekly occurrence, or even more than weekly. 
this is how Alzheimer's tends to advance. It starts off, you know, the occasional sundown or senior moment, and it gets worse and worse and worse. If we assume that dementia is the cause of him staggering around on stage aimlessly, looking around, closed body language, like, hmm, sort of that the deer in the headlights look, having to be directed to exit the stage, forgetting people's names, forgetting the year, saying weird shit. If he continues to advance in his dementia at this rate, he's not even going to make it fully through his term. Uh, he will be incapable of holding that office within another 12 months or thereabouts, if, it's, if that truly is the reason why this is happening. And there's no countermand to it to uh, indicate that it's anything other than dementia. AD 1989. I doubt World War III will happen. Mutually assured destruction prevents this from happening. Also, the geopolitical situation has historically been worse, like the Cuban Missile Crisis and Able Archer 83, and it didn't happen then. Yeah, uh, I would agree. I don't think there will be a nuclear war. No, we could be wrong. And if we're wrong, we got bigger problems than the fact that we were wrong. Music and fiction. Poland opened own pipeline at the same time as Nord Stream. Yes, there is a new pipeline in the works. Michael Greco. Have you heard about Trump offering to broker a peace deal with Russia? I hear the Russian asset salt flowing that would put Hurricane Ian to shame. Yes, uh, indeed, I did see that. He posted on Truth Social the other day. We'll get right into that. Russia has officially denied involvement with Nord Stream. Uh, and I covered this morning, there was a separate CNN piece that insinuated via lie by structure that Russia was uh, responsible. Uh, Russia, nonetheless, is attempting to convene things and, and get to the bottom of what happened. Uh, the actions of Russia in the immediate aftermath of this and you know the impetus for it to actually happen, to me, don't line up to say that Russia did it. Uh, I, I think that there was very likely a third party saboteur. Whether this was the U.S. to try to stymie Nord Stream from being used for leverage, the Germans getting tired of the bullshit, Ukrainians, the Danes or something, uh, we may never know. Now, we, we might get confirmation 40 years from now. It'll be like a Gulf of Tonkin sort of thing. Be, uh, be watchful about what happens in the news over the coming weeks with regards to this development. Right now, the story is not even really trending. Now, people are talking about the hurricane, Marjorie Taylor Greene, which we will get to in a moment and things like that, this points to them believing that Russia did not do it. They're saying, well, I, I think we're skeptical that that happened. Since we can't pin it on Russia, we better bury the story because that means that somebody in the Western sphere is probably involved. Scarfy the Strange. Will Brandon withhold aid to make DeSantis look bad or will he cut a deal with him to run against Trump and become a puppet? I don't think either of those scenarios will be necessary, actually. <clears throat> Florida is used to hurricanes. Sparky, did that new pipeline from Norway really come online or was it just hyped as, it, uh, as if it did to calm down German protesters and it actually isn't ready? I don't know. I don't have confirmation on whether the gas is flowing yet. Louis Ball, Sticks, Nassau County on Long Island, New York, just added a urine test to their CVS requirements. Your thoughts? It will fall when injuncted in a court. Um, but yes, uh, New Jersey and New York and a few other states are attempting to circumvent Bruin by simply making other onerous burdens with regards to getting a concealed carry permit, open carry, et cetera. Um, most of these particular uh, attempts at making laws will, in my opinion, fail at the judicial level. They'll just keep doing it, though. They're, uh, they're doing it to get votes from far blue constituencies that love the idea of disarming their neighbors so they can be abused. Mike Rindal, remember Biden's stand-up Chuck moment? I think he practices creepy responses, then forgets not to do it live. It's possible. Chuck Morris, my grandmother saw angels before she died. Joe is seeing dead politicians. Any thoughts on this? Yes, he's going to the great hellhole in the sky known as DC 2.0. So yeah, Russia has denied involvement uh, in Nord Stream officially. Um, but there is an insinuation that Russia is responsible. I remain skeptical. I also remain skeptical of claims that the U.S. was directly involved. Uh, it's certainly possible. There's a, a legitimate reason why they would want to do that, the U.S. government. Uh, but we don't have any proof at this time. We had U.S. and Russian ships in the area, as well as ships from neighboring countries. Uh, at this point, I can't tell you any further info on that one. Now, we've got a special story here. 
to all of you thirsty boys out there. Um, I, I'm sure that this will become a meme. Marjorie Taylor Greene is facing divorce, uh, actually, by her husband uh, under irreconcilable differences. Marjorie Taylor Greene, MAGA politician, commonly in the news, commonly trending on Twitter, um, tw trending again because of this. She is going to be single soon, so I'm sure that there will be thirsty-ass memes that are posted out there because she's, along with Bobert and Myra Flores and others, she's part of the, the younger-ish Republican crowd, the MAGA crowd, which tends to be younger than the aging Bush and Reagan neocons that are out there that are still left. And I'm sure that there will be some shit posting with regards to this. It will be uh, extremely interesting to see. I, I mean, when I go to 4chan later, I expect to see Marjorie Taylor Greene classified ad meme and stuff like that. I, I have a feeling that I'm going to see that. I don't know exactly why their uh, marriage would have irreconcilable differences, though. She's got a good income. She's relatively popular. She's almost certain to be reelected. I, maybe he uh, he wants to be in the limelight more and he feels sad about the fact that she's like, no, 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 you know, I'm, I'm the one that got elected. So, you know, butt out or something. That'll be it'll be very interesting to see, by the way, uh, there will definitely be um, uh, an autopsy of the divorce proceedings. Um, I see the leftoids trying to use it as a talking point against Marjorie Taylor Greene. Like, uh, what was it? Uh, was it Parnas, Cochiarella, one of those others, one of the in interchangeable 20 something leftoid craftivists, one of the late Zoomer craftivists, the leftoids there was like, uh, well, Marjorie Taylor Greene is getting a divorce. Now it's time to divorce her from politics or something like that. And uh, it's just really cringe. And it shows that the left can't mean, by the way. So, yeah, Marjorie Taylor Greene will be going through divorce proceedings. Since she presumably has the higher income, don't know anything about her husband, so I may be wrong. Maybe he's a millionaire investor for all I know. Uh, I guess uh, I guess she'll owe him alimony. <laughs> It'd be very funny. Louis Ball, CCW, not CVS. Lol. Yes, concealed carry. The cat is attempting to uh, storm ahead. She loves to sit right here in front of the keyboard, and I don't like it. Baron Von Blair, five ninety nine for eighty seven octane fuel in Southern California. Clank. Yeah, I got uh, over 100 people send in tips about how much gas costs them, including in some uh, other countries from the U.S. And uh, there is no rhyme or reason as far as I can concoct for the gas price shift. In some cases, it's going up catastrophically overnight. In other places, it's continuing to lull. Um, I, I don't know. Some people point to the Toledo, Ohio refinery fire, uh, but it seems to be hit or miss across the whole continent. So I, I'm not sure what's happening. Tyler Morrison, Alzheimer's diagnosis equals no impeachment for Joe. Yeah, just getting 25th. Mannix 1969, do you think the globalists are part of a cult or fraternity? If so, which one? Uh, no, there are plenty of female globalists, so it's not a fraternity. Uh, and I, uh, most of these people don't have any godly beliefs whatsoever. Uh, spirituality is too advanced for them. Their god is the dollar. So yeah, to... Uh, all the uh, ship posters that make memes out there. Marjorie Taylor Greene's going to be single. So, you know, <laughs> it's going to be funny. I guarantee fucking tea that we're going to see some crazy shit on 4chan in the coming days. We've got more news. Oh, yeah. The a link in the description archived, of course, to this one. The Atlantic is pitching the idea of a woke army. Uh, and they beg the question uh, right in the tagline. They're like, oh, why do woke armies keep defeating the the, uh, the, the, the burly Neanderthal-esque ones that cling to their manliness fetishes and stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, it's framed in the context of Ukraine versus Russia. Can you please tell me how the Ukrainian military is woke? Because I'm just not seeing it. Have you ever seen the Ukrainian MREs, by the way? Shit, you, you definitely, you have to have a good intestinal fortitude to stomach those ones. The Russian ones are indeed quite a bit better, although they're still not as good as what you'd get from the U.S., Britain, or the Netherlands, so, so to speak. Look at a French MRE sometime. It's gourmet. Look at, a, look at an Italian MRE. Uh, they're too busy eating those to even fucking goddamn fight. Uh, the fact is that wokeness in your military is not a good idea. Uh, the idea that it needs to be hyper-masculine in the sort of 50 cents, you know, Marlboros and kick-ass and you know, piloting and shit like that. Okay, okay, maybe that's locked in time at the early Cold War and is the result of propaganda. But the concept that you want a weak, 
um, um, sensitive military and that this somehow enhances its capabilities is completely batshit. The Ukrainians on the battlefield are behaving just like the Russians are, only in their own territory. Pre-referendum, uh, of course, we'll probably end up talking about that in the coming days. Uh, and the fact is that they're fighting hard and they're sitting there in the cold dirt and the fucking mud with their weapons um, and, and eating shit that's barely for human consumption and uh, and sleeping out under the stars, basically. Uh, there's nothing woke about it. What are you talking about? They're not drafting females in the uh, Ukrainian military. If they start doing that, then you know that the tide of war has definitely turned. It's the U.S. and a few Western European nations that are doing this shit. Yes, when you can press a button because you're using drones or remote-controlled robots to go kill people, and, and you can call this woke and social justice and inclusive all you want, I think that's you know crazy. Yes, uh, you don't need the person who presses the button to fire the missile out of the drone to be smoking Marlboros and drinking black coffee and waking up at 6 a.m. and doing 10,000 push-ups. That is true. But real humans have to be the ones to police things. If you intend to actually hold your territory or go in and hold another territory, you can't just do it with drones. The U.S. has shown the abysmal failure that is automated warfare uh, and remote controlled warfare to do such things. It's incapable of, of conducting uh, such operations. The Russians, meanwhile, have no problem doing it. The Ukrainians have no problem doing it. This is a decadent article. The concept is we're better than them. Um, we, we wash more. No, we're more inclusive. Um, we still have a manpower shortage. You're taking literally anyone at this point into the military who's not physically crippled and you still aren't getting enough people signing up. Other countries, believe it or not, that are living outside of La La Land don't do this. Uh, the idea that a woke military beats a non-woke military is just such a hilariously bad premise. I, I don't even know why their editorial staff okayed this particular article. John Hoyle, in a time of instability and fuel crises, would it be considered evil to intentionally further instability by destroying critical infrastructure? Yeah, because you're making your fellow citizens suffer. I don't know why that would be even considered. Lev Polyakov, tomorrow, 9 a.m. EST, Styx versus Jess Burbank, who sometimes hosts the Young Turks on Unions. Set reminder on BreakTheRules.tv. Yes, indeed, tomorrow I do have a scheduled debate on Break the Rules, so... Be there or be uh, ovular. It's going to be a good one. Adam THM, woke armies winning like the USA and Afghanistan. Well, to be clear, when we first got in, it wasn't a woke military. It became woke over time. Michael Reinmund, Ukraine isn't woke, but the Western left wants it to be so bad. Yeah, look at the Azov Battalion. They are, they are very much progressive individuals. <laughs> they are into Pride Month and origami. And organic, uh, non-GMO, vegan tofu and shit like that. Yeah, of course they are. Oh, we get the people from Martha's Vineyard to get gifts, uh, gift baskets going and they send them to Ukraine for the soldiers there. And it'll all be like fucking tofu and vegetarian sushi ingredients and stuff. It'd be hilarious. Hey, you want some cucumbers straight from my garden in Martha's Vineyard? This will sustain you through many battles. Or you can just clobber somebody in the nose with it and hope that they don't shoot you. Orwell's goon, best MREs are Korean. There's a plastic cord you pull that heats it through some kind of mechanism. Heats much better than US and much tastier. Never tried a Korean MRE. I'd love to. I should do another round of begging people to send me interesting MREs. Don't worry, I pay people when they do that if they uh, want me to. Darkness prevails. What's your opinion of AI art? Is it copyright infringement? What do you think its future is? I think it's a gimmick. Um, good marketing gimmick, but I don't think it's particularly useful. And copyright infringement, hell, half the shit on the uh, internet is. Salty iron worker, if and when Republicans win the House, what should they focus on first? What can they make the fastest and most important changes? Side note, I'd take MTG out for a drink. Thanks again for everything you do for us, my friend. Yeah, she's going to get a lot of proposals, probably. Um, when they win the House, the first thing they should do is down the uh, refuse to continue funding the IRS expansion. That's number one. Um, they should refuse to uh, to fund as much as possible, really, under Beijing Biden's stewardship. I mean, it's not legitimate, anything that he's doing. It's all unconstitutional. So third man, do you think China will implode over the next decade to the point they are no longer a legitimate threat to the West? I think they implode. Uh, and I think that that lessens potentially the long term threat. But short term, it makes a greater threat. They might get desperate. 
Francisco Alcala, seeing some news on Telegram about Nord Stream repairs beginning on October 3rd for your information. I'd be skeptical about whether they will uh, not find a gaping hole down there that they're incapable of fixing. Make it Nashy. How do you wash and care for your Hawaiian shirts? Uh, they get washed on a cooler setting and then air dried. That way they don't shrink or get all fucked up. Then they'd be as fucked up as their wearer. Ha ha ha. Self-deprecation is funny. So yeah, woke army my ass. Next story. IMF globalists are bullying the UK. Yes, and the Bank of England, by the way, buying up bonds right now to try to stabilize a very precarious economic situation. They've got problems in the UK's economy. Entirely self-inflicted, I would point out, because of lockdownerism. It's almost like watching what's going to happen in the United States happen a little bit faster in a somewhat smaller economy. Just so that all of the Americans out there don't get cocky about the British being knocked off their pedestal by their own fiscal mistakes, the U.S. is probably going to follow suit. I don't think it'll work. I think their economy is going to backslide and Brexit will be blamed. They've already laid the groundwork for this. And I said fucking years ago that something like that would end up happening inevitably in the long run. Um, but now... The IMF is looking at Liz Truss, the new uh, prime minister of the United Kingdom, uh, who gets uh, to meet with the queen once before the queen cr uh, croaks. I'm sure she was very happy about the timing. Maybe it's it just uh, the queen couldn't deal with it. She's like, oh, for the love of God, you know, you know, fuck this. And then she just goes and has a massive stroke in bed and dies from the stress of having to deal with the Tory party devolving even further from Boris Johnson's bullshit. Not that the alternative is any better. They've got less choice in their elections than the United States does. The IMF now is coming out, issuing a fairly rare statement saying, well, the British sh shouldn't be lowering taxes at this time. What are you doing? Oh, my God, you're going to lower taxes marginally for British people? Holy shit. How will we implement the Great Reset if people don't suffer and starve and end up in bread lines? And that's basically what it is. The IMF wants to buy into Britain and control more things. Orwell's goon. Nothing weird about Lizzo twerking while playing Madison's crystal flute. Also, Caligula made his horse a senator. The horse as a senator story, I believe, is apocryphal, if I remember correctly. But yes, it was funny to see uh, well, Lizzo, I, I guess, literally know nothing. Is she even a musician? I'm not 100% sure because I just don't give a shit about celeb bullshit. Uh, yeah, James Madison, I guess he had a flute made mostly with crystal and uh, she got to play it after 200 years. This was a, a very, very inspiring moment to some people. JB, my best friend brought to my attention Trump is in massive debt with Deutsche Bank and he is being sued for it. Do you think Trump has bad business practices with the bank loans? He might have to liquidate a skyscraper somewhere in the world to pay off the interest balance. Oh, my God. Yeah, Trump, we've got him this time. Two more weeks blew in on. He's got massive numbers of assets because he has so much real estate. Of course, he's got a lot of debt. The, the Noir. Hi, Sticks. Uh, when will you have some merch? I would love to clank along with the mug. Also, have you seen Barbados begging the U.S. to not pull out their banks? Yeah, I, I didn't see that. As far as merch, um, I'm not sure about the timeline for that. I've had bad experiences with merch managers, um, you know, basically just leaving me high and dry. So uh, I'm on hold on that until I get somebody that I'm paying directly to handle everything or doing it myself. Aquafan, I'm in Dillon, Florida. Just lost power. Thank God for cellular data and smartphones. Lots of rain, minor wind, and minor flooding in my garage. Glad that you're well. Mike Grindel, I'll bet the Martha's Vineyard 50 are glad DeSantis saved them from Ian. Yeah, why isn't a DeSantis uh, getting credit for sending 50 diverse people out of harm's way, you know, up to Martha's Vineyard where they're not going to get hit by a hurricane? Silky Johnson, I'm a total noob when it comes to the occult. Did ancient religions, sciences, mythologies influence it in some way, or was it always there? The occult is the search for what is hidden or obscure, um, a search for truth, you could call it. And so, yes, it ties into literally everything else, every human endeavor. Mr. Wonderful, first thing the GOP should do when they get back the house is cut off the Ukraine money waterfall, IRS second. Uh, I disagree. IRS first, because it's a major domestic issue. Those should take precedence. And secondly, because the GOP is not going to cut off Ukrainian aid. I hate to tell you this. They're going to keep giving them billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. We'll see if they uh, tackle the anti-gun horseshit in the United States. 
It's beyond the pale that any member of Congress would support giving Stinger missiles to a foreign nation that we're not even allied with while trying to prevent Americans from having more than 10 bullets in the magazine. It's beyond the pale. It should, it should be impeachable. They should all be removed from office if they support that. Next one, <clears throat> we got to talk about Jeffrey Dahmer. Of course, Jeffrey Dahmer, serial killer, eight people. Tried to make a bone thrown out of them at one point. Uh, apparently, it was a couple of bodies short. One sick, fucked up motherfucker. I would say Jeffrey Dahmer is definitely top tier when it comes to being fucked up. Like, you've got a hierarchy of serial killers. I would say the most fucked up was Albert Fish. Even though the confirmed body count is lower, just read the letters that he used to send to people. There's some weird shit there. And I can't even find some of the letters that uh, apparently they've still got some of them. He sent dirty letters to women from classifieds and shit like that and, and would like perv on them and try to make them uncomfortable. At one point, apparently the one saving grace is that he never abused his kids other than trying to get them to beat him with a, with a belt, which is weird. He never raped them or did anything like that. I guess <laughs> if he has one saving grace to his character, I guess, you know, they were at least marginally well cared for most of the time. But uh, he, he would kill kids and, and eat them. And then he'd send elaborate letters talking about the entire process to the families, which is an added level of crazy. Jeffrey Dahmer's up there. He's not as crazy as Fish. I don't think he's not as crazy as Gacy, John Wayne Gacy, the killer clown. I think his body count was higher, too. He, he was, you know, raping and killing young boys and then burying them under the floorboards. And everyone thought he was a model citizen. Jeffrey Dahmer, though, probably up there. At the bottom is Eileen Warnos. She was given a bad rap in life. I can see why she went crazy and started killing dudes who tried to hire her as a prostitute. Almost don't blame her for killing them, by the way. Gein is up there. Um, you know, and then Manson's not on the list because he didn't kill anyone. Wink, wink. Guardian Gamer, thoughts on Ukraine asking people for $2,000 to personalize explosives against Russia. If it were in any other situation, they would get banned off of social media for doing so. But yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer, you've got a new, uh, I guess, a, a film about Jeffrey Dahmer. And it was originally listed as LGBT because Dahmer was, was a homosexual. Uh, he was. Uh, he targeted men. He screwed them, he, raping them in most cases. Um, did weird shit to them and, and eventually, you know, cut their bodies up, ate part of them, put them on the skull throw, and it did crazy shit all of the time. But his sexual attraction, while warped, was fundamentally gay. Now, he was a, a gay individual. But you're not allowed to label it as having to do anything with that. The woke crowd came for it, screamed bloody murder for several days, and now that particular tag is removed for the uh, Jeffrey Dahmer film special. What, a, what an uplifting thing to watch with the whole family. It's basically a cooking show, right? We're getting towards Thanksgiving. Just imagine you go over to Jeffrey Dahmer's house and you uh, eat the hors d'oeuvres there. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's a little bit weird. Because when you have, like, uh, let, let's look at any other group of people. When you have a, a, a moniker, a, a mark uh, on Amazon or wherever else it happens to be, to denote like what it involves. Like let's say it's a serial killer drama and um, it's about some Hispanic serial killer. It'll get a, a Hispanic label on, on certain sites. Nobody will have a problem with it because it involves a protagonist, although evil, who happens to be Hispanic. Let's say that it's about, let's say you, you're watching Carrie. It's going to, a woman's lib could be probably a tag on that considering the plot line. Nobody would care. Now, they might lift an eyebrow at it, but they're not going to go screeching off into the hinterlands. With the Jeffrey Dahmer special, he's no longer allowed to be labeled gay, even though he actually, objectively, observably, provably, self-proclaimedly was only interested in men. It's very, very interesting to me. It's a scrubbing, a Stalinization of history. Somebody should do a little comedy show cooking with Jeffrey Dahmer. It's okay to make fun of it after the fact, because all of the people are already dead and in the ground, and uh, Dahmer's dead too. Deny S. I've heard that Caligula, making his horse a senator, may have been kind of trolling, i.e. your job is so insignificant my horse can do it. Yeah, I've heard that. <clears throat> Mr. Wonderful, Podesta's sculpture of the headless Dahmer victim. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the DNC. The DNC prefers to cannibalize people economically. Princess, the new Dahmer series was lit. Love, Ethan Peters, and I felt super sorry for Dahmer. Being an empath sucks. Albert the Gray Man was the worst ever. 
Yeah, Albert Fish is the opposite. Uh, there was no empathy there. He was so screwed up that he would, uh, I mean, he'd do everything under the sun. The uh, litany of different crimes and perversions committed is so massive uh, that it almost boggles explanation how a person can be that fucked up. You have to have both an underlying disorder and an extremely abusive upbringing and constantly encounter weird shit in your, in your young adulthood in order to get to that point. Uh, he claims that there were dozens of additional victims. And if he did it to marginalized communities, we'll use that loaded term, nobody is going to investigate. Nobody's going to know. Oh, a drifter just drifted out of the Jewish neighborhood over here and we haven't seen him again. Disappearing person. We don't have any reason to suspect murder. We don't have the resources to look into it. Black kid from the black neighborhood. Albert Fish eats them uh, in part or in whole. Uh, they're not going to know. Same with like Jack the Ripper. There were all sorts of people getting stabbed and shot constantly back then uh, in that particular area. There were probably more victims if there was a Jack the Ripper that you don't even know of. Not that I believe that there was a singular Jack the Ripper. I already talked about this in one of my videos some weeks ago. Next news story. Oh, this one I'm going to read verbatim. This was a funny one. By the way, again, you can take the uh, links in the description and various news stories. Also, uh, take a, and oh, unfortunately, is it gone? Oh, come on. Don't, uh, oh, okay, good. Thank goodness. No, I just put it in wrong. And then I put it in wrong again. What the fuck am I doing? There we go. Thank goodness that it wasn't uh, erased. Keep in mind as well, there are links in the description as well as pinned at the top of chat if you're watching on YouTube to Pixel Planet, where we are sinking all of Turkey into the ocean. It's going to be part of the Mediterranean soon. And uh, over in Greece, you can help them restore their country with the medium blue. They, uh, you can see their flag there. They are repairing it uh, over time. Uh, the Turkish streamers have abandoned ship and apparently will not be back or aren't planning to be so. We've got free reign to do whatever we want, and we've got too high numbers for anyone to stop us. It is a clank platform now. Uh, Joe, Sticks, Ed Gein is top tier. Furniture from skin, strung up his mom in the barn, fucked up shit. Yeah, but still cr less crazy than Albert Fish. I still give him the number one status. Tom McMorrow, absence of proof is proof of absence, unless it's the orange fella. Then suspicion is guilt. Partisan Dems are emotionally about nine years old. That's being very generous, generous with their development. Occam's Razor, one or of two if Italy were to take Turkey from the rear. Well, we don't need any allies in this fight. Uh, we've already put them to full flight. And Turkey, I mean, uh, Italy right now is busy annexing Tunisia and parts of southern France, by the way. They're trying to form the Western Roman Empire, last I checked. <laughs> so th there's some interesting politics on Pixel Planet. This is from Le Papillon Bleu 2 on Twitter. This is one of many liberal co-posts. Since President Biden has been in office, 1.2 million pounds of illegal drugs have been seized at our southern border. That shows this administration is committed to keeping America safe. I see so many inversion takes on this particular story. The claim is that a legendary amount of drugs have been seized at the southern U.S. border, more than in any other year, and of course, it's not even quite October. 1.2 million pounds of drugs. Man, they should just give them out like candy to people. When they seize drugs at the border, they should just make it freely available to all of the people that want to do drugs. Hey, we got a little cocaine for you. Yeah, we got a bunch of uh, heroin. Just don't give out the fentanyl. It's killing people left and right. Give them the fun stuff. Oh, acid tabs? Oh, okay. Marijuana? That's already legal in half the states. Who gives a fucking shit? Hashish and stuff like that. Yeah, maybe a little bit of crack here and there. Yeah, the you know, Viper says it never killed anyone, so it's all good, right? Uh, as long as you keep the fentanyl out. Anyway, <clears throat> what happens is that this is sort of, a, a, this is very similar to the claims that were made about the Biden admin by Richard Spencer when we were debating the last time, and by other liberals like Richard Spencer, although he, I think he goes further left. He's more like a racist Bernie Sanders now. It's uh, sad to see. Um, what they claim is that there were, uh, more uh, more apprehensions under Biden of illegals than under Trump, and that this was a success. This is proof that his uh, policies are actually more hard line than Trump's with regards to the border. But then you pointed out that there were uh, many times fewer border crossings, so there's fewer people to apprehend when Trump is president. Ergo, yeah, naturally you're going to apprehend less people. There's less people there. The reason why more drugs are being seized is quite clear. 
more people are coming across the border than ever before. There is no attempt to stop them. If 1.2 million pounds of drugs were seized, probably 10 times that made it across the border. People tossing satchels over the fucking fence, people walking across with condoms full of coke stuffed in their asshole and things like that. No, this uh, woman, she's carrying her baby. Leave her alone. And it turns out it's a fake baby made of paper mache and it's stacked full of fucking black tar heroin. I'm sure that things like that have actually happened, by the way. The fact that more drugs are being seized is a terrible thing. It's terrible because it shows that people are more callous about coming across the border because they know they're less likely to be stopped. You got a, a parade of 20,000 people charging through across the Rio Grande. How many of those people can you actually catch? What happens is that some narco down south of the border will approach some uh, random friendly refugee or migrant or whatever you want to call them and say, hey, we can uh, kill you right now. Or we can stuff a couple condoms full of fentanyl up your ass and you can walk across the border and our agent Pablo on the other side will take them. Hell, we'll give you 50 bucks if you do this. So you can get 50 bucks or you can get a bullet. Now, oh, which one do you choose? Some dude, he's walking across with his girlfriend. They're like, uh-uh, uh, you're not going across today. You'll have to wait till tomorrow. Here's the de uh, deal. I got 12 dudes here. They're really horny. They're going to gang rape your girlfriend unless you take this fucking brick of coke across for me. Put it in your knapsack, figure out a way to get it across, fucking do it. Otherwise, you're going to have to fucking watch. What the fuck would you do? You're not going to be able to tackle the 12 narco guys, are you? Okay, I'll take the cocaine. Hey, can I snort a little bit of it? Okay, you can snort a little bit beforehand, just not too much, because then you'll have a nosebleed and it'll be very, very obvious what you're doing. This is happening all the goddamn time on the southern uh, border. Occam's razor, two of two, would Greece help? They're already fighting Turkey because they're liberating their own land on Pixel Planet, which Turkey had uh, taken over. Princess, nobody is as bad as Albert Fish. Yeah, I think that other than Pol Pot, he's the most irredeemable human being that I know of that may have ever existed. I think Pol Pot's number one on that just because of the sheer goddamn death toll. Read up about Pol Pot, by the way, and then realize that U.S. policy recognized him as the legit leader of Cambodia for an extended period of time until a bunch of other communists decided to invade and depose him because he was just so terrible. Keep in mind that the U.S. backed him. Read about some of his crimes and then get back to me on the fucking stupid mythology of the U.S. government being beyond reproach morally. FUBAR 2020, have you ever heard of Pedro Lopez, a Colombian serial killer that murdered 110 kids and is a free man now? I think I did see something about that once. Sarah Murray, 327 a gallon in Charleston, West Virginia. Oh, that's not that bad. It's still higher than it should be, considering the amount of fucking oil that the United States sits on. Now I get the next story. New Jersey is uh, seeking to skirt the Bruin decision. This was mentioned by somebody earlier, actually, uh, by a super chat, uh, by trying to make people get a piss test in order to get their concealed carry permit. The idea is that uh, if you're using any illegal substance, well, you're not supposed to have drugs at all. You're breaking the law. By the way, this has happened to marijuana growers. They're growing a couple plants in their backyard and the cops show up really friendly like, by the way, probably not even a no knock raid and say, hey, so you got some uh, cannabis sativa out there and growing well. Oh, yes, officer. Remember, it's legal in our state, but it's not legal federally. Sorry, dude, but we uh, see here that you bought a couple of shotguns the other day and everyone knows it's the devil's weed. We know you're going to get violent, blow your head off, blow your neighbor's head off or shoot up a school. Give us the fucking guns. And there's nothing you can do about it because you did violate federal law. It's a, they won't uh, put you in federal prison for it. It's just a couple of weed plants. They know better. But they'll take your guns and then smash them with hammers or uh, run them over with a steamroller or melt them down or keep them for themselves. Now, the cops have access to all sorts of cool shit. They get all the drugs, all the guns and all this shit. Hacking devices. Xavier Sticks, can you tell Mahidi to take his schizo meds? Uh, I don't know what that is. Is that a person in chat on Pixel Planet, maybe? Yeah, it probably is. There are a lot of people, if you look at chat on Pixel Planet, you'll see the weirdest shit that you've ever seen. It's weirder than being on B on 4chan. Eight Hog, in your opinion, was it the right call to drop the bombs on Japan? No, uh, I do not believe so. Also, 399 gas in southeast Wisconsin. Ouch, that's pretty high. No, I do not believe so. Now, they should have used standard bombing. Japan was surrounded. It wasn't surrendering, but it didn't have any industry at that point. Destroy the industry. Don't even bother to invade the island. Blockade it 
until the point at which it's no longer capable of fighting. It would have been fairly simple. In the end, uh, uh, Truman, supposedly, uh, had to tell the military to stop. Uh, apparently, the uh, order to give the weapon, the deploy the weapons, may not have even been from the president. It wasn't established as an executive thing back then. The military fielded the weapons themselves. They decided in their own presser that they were going to keep dropping another bomb every couple of weeks on Japan till they surrendered. They planned to drop more than just on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They would have butchered millions and millions and millions of people potentially. And because the communications can break down, at some point, how can the Japanese even surrender? You'd just be uh, you know, deploying atomic weapons on a half-empty island at some point. Truman decided, no, no, no more without a presidential order, and thankfully, within a few days, they surrendered. I do not believe that it was justified to uh, kill 150,000-plus civilians because you didn't want to have to invade the island. And if any other country were to have done it at the time, it would have been condemned by the United States. It was basically just to brag about the fact that we have a weapon. You can't do anything about it. Look at what we can do world. The problem is during development, Fuchs was gaining all of the intel that he could on the project and giving it directly to the Soviets. They weren't even surprised when the first atomic weapon was dropped. Stalin didn't even have a reaction when he was told because he already knew. If they had been more careful, we never would have had a Cold War, by the way. And then we have our final uh, news story. Again, link in the description. This is one hell of a goddamn whopper. In fact, I'll uh, I'll do this one verbatim too, I guess. So we got Culp over the border, but you know, that's more just funny leftoid stuff. Reuters, major advertisers including Dyson, Mazda, and chemical company Ecolab have suspended marketing campaigns or removed ads from parts of Twitter because their promotions are appearing alongside tweets soliciting child pornography, the companies told Reuters. Yeah. Um, kind of proving Elon Musk's point now, are you? Uh, if you can't even crack down on that kind of material on your site, and that's illegal material, so people soliciting illegal things, uh, and making terroristic threats and stuff. How are you not violating 230, Section 230, that protects you as a platform rather than a publisher, if you are devoting resources that you could use to hunt that material down and get rid of it, and you're banning people for pedestrian political opinions instead? or for hurting someone's fee-fees, or for not using the right pronouns, for deadnaming someone. Twitter bans people all the time because they use the wrong pronouns or had the wrong opinion, but you can't even make sure that your advertisements paid for ads by major corporations. These aren't even just private, independent individuals. Uh, that it's not running alongside material that's explicitly illegal under US law. You can't even give them that fucking assurance, by the way. If a bunch of companies flee Twitter right now, it'll tank the stock further, thus adding even more fuel to the fire for Elon Musk's argument against them. He's not in the end, in my opinion, at this point. I, I don't think a sane judge is going to try to force him to pay $44 billion to acquire Twitter. It's worth like half that. And that's probably a stretch at this point. They keep making fucking stupid mistakes. They keep doing the most stupid. They, they, I, I, I hate how YouTube, Twitter, they, they all do the same thing. They gain dominance and then they start making dumb errors that they should know better than to make because it's so self-evident what will happen. They misread the room over and over. It's like a comedian. They have a really funny uh, uh, series of jokes. They have a really funny, well put together show. Night after night, they go up in front of packed stages. They get more and more packed till they're headlining in Vegas, telling the greatest jokes ever. Then they say, you know what? I know I've got a good thing going, but I'm going to switch to different jokes. And then they start making lame ass jokes. And instead of realizing that people are genuinely booing them because they're not entertaining and funny, they just keep with that set for the next few years. And slowly, instead of headlining in Vegas, they're headlining in Burlington, Vermont at a fucking half crowded bar. And they're getting less and less people in and they're wondering what's wrong. Twitter is doing that. They're picking a fight with Elon Musk. They're doing stupid shit with their ads. They're banning major users off their platform that have huge audiences. Those people are going elsewhere. YouTube is doing the same fucking shit. TikTok is too, by the way. They're going to put themselves into an early grave if they're not careful. It happens over and over again. Why is it impossible for an organized company of any merit whatsoever to stabilize long term and realize that once it's doing something right, it should just fucking keep doing it and shouldn't change the way it does things? It doesn't make any sense. It's like these people want to be poor or something like that. I don't get it. 
Break the Chains Media. Hey, Sticks, I made the massive spoon near the boba, boobas in Western Sahara. Clanked them onward. How can I send you some homegrown hot sauce for you to try? Thoughts on simulation theory and impacts on religion. Um, well, if simulation theory is true, all religions are horseshit. Not that I wouldn't believe that anyway, to tell the truth. Um, I'm currently not in the U.S. and I don't have a P.O. box, so I don't think that hot sauce would actually make it into the Netherlands anyway. Customs would probably seize it, probably get shattered on the way here, and then there'd be a sloppy mess in there with broken glass in it. Of course, if I get sad, I can always cut myself with the glass and rub hot sauce in it Albert Fish style. And thank you for making the spoon. It is, uh, it is noted. Sean McClinton. By the way, no more uh, Super Chats, please, everyone. I'm going to keep it a little bit short today. Uh, howdy from Texas. What actual chance do you think Beto has? Zero percent. Uh, I see no support at all for him where I live, but local news acts like it's going to be close. It's not going to be close. There's not a single poll showing him ahead. And the aggregate, I think, um, let me look that up. I'll fact check this live. By how much is Greg Abbott ahead of Beto O'Rourke in the aggregate? So this is a poll of polls. It matters much more than any individual poll will. Oh, God, come on. Got to maximize this and fucking... Uh, I think we had a poll. Yeah, we had a poll yesterday. What's the aggregate at now? Yeah, Abbott leads by eight points, and that's in the aggregate. That's insurmountable. Even a five-point swing towards the Dems, which isn't going to happen, wouldn't give it to Beto. In fact, now I think I favor Abbott to be ahead of Kemp and DeSantis against their opponents. Those are the big three that I'm watching. Kerry Lake might pull ahead at some point in the, in the following weeks, and we might see that become a, four, a fourth wheel. That'd be great, by the way. I think she'll win. Mr. Wonderful, they only had two bombs. They bluffed them. No, they had enough material to continue making more. They were they were deriving uh, the material necessary to make a bomb roughly every month or a couple a month. Um, thus why they made more bombs after the war ended. They had the material and the sophistication, and they were making it better. Uh, they had the capability of doing so. Deadly Raver, lol, poor Twitter. The little blue bird is shooting itself and proving once again that if you show me a virtue signaler, I'll show you a hypocrite. If you show me an old tech site, I'll show you a site that's going to be dead in 10 years. John Hoyle, have you seen Elon Musk Starlink satellite trains in the night sky? You can search, see a satellite to find where you can observe them. That's interesting. Yeah, I did see a one blew over Vermont. People thought it was a comet or a UFO. Transylvania 90. Some of Stalin's guys, including himself, were among the most evil. People like Beria, Ehrenberg, Blokin. He personally shot 7,000 people at Katyn. Or Katyn. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm not Ukrainian. Yeah, some of these people are sickos. Miku4xbot. You skipped over my chat. Clonk. Oh, shit. Uh, where is it then? Uh, I'll try to find it. But yeah, please don't send any more chats, everyone, because I've got uh, stuff i got to do. Um, um, I'm not seeing any other chat by you. My apologies. Oh, oh yeah. Halloween is coming. If you are reading this, there is a skeleton inside you right now. You have been preemptively spooked. Yes, there is a spooky skeleton inside every person. You're a skeleton covered in dead meat that's being uh, powered by stardust. Woo. Josh Palillo, here in Tampa, just wanted to say everyone to prepare properly in case of emergencies. Clank, clank. Yes, remember, if you have canned goods that you're going to fall back on, you might want a can opener. Make sure you've got an extra one. Uh, you know, storm surge might uh, grab one of them. Keep one on your utility belt. Sarah Murray, you can't tell me what to do. Lulz. Battle Elf, the juice are the men that won't be blamed for nothing. Saucy Jack. No. I don't like uh, apple juice. That appears to be what's on the little box emoji that you've got there. I like tomato juice. Corto Maltese, I just got here. What are we talking about? We're talking about me literally ending the stream. My apologies for that one. I started late. Got to uh, fucking uh, do other things too. Got to uh, cook off some kohlrabi later and figure out what the hell I'm going to have for my main course. I was going to get a good steak earlier, but then they didn't have the uh, ribeyes that I usually make because I, I don't know. The uh, end cuts are good but not as good. And then the other one's like some really fancy ass cut of meat that they've got at the Yumbo, but I'm not going to pay twice as much for the fucking steak. Dr. Zeodin, your bones are moist. Yeah. When a person dies, uh, pull out their leg bone and use it as an anal dildo or something like that. Albert Fish probably did just to be clear. Anyway, that's about all. Peace out.